Hey there. So I wanted to demonstrate a technique to add geometry to terrain without having to manually sculpt it, and instead using ZBrush to project noise in order to add detail to it without having to do a lot of um, individual labor for each terrain piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this base mesh, and then we are going to check how the UVs look, and then we're going to subdivide it so that it's ready to go into ZBrush, and then I'll show you the ZBrush part. Um, we're going to apply a height map to this surface and deform the geometry based on the height map. So first, we want to make sure that we know what the UV scale of this looks like, so that when our height map goes on, we know what the rocks are going to look like. I have this texture, which isn't the prettiest, but it will get the job done. Um, and right now, those rock shapes look pretty big. So I'm going to increase the size of my UV island until it looks like it'll be a decent rocky surface. That looks fine. Um, and if you're in 3ds Max, uh, you know a lot of these techniques are pretty basic. Um, you'll just have to do it with a different UI, but hopefully that's okay. So I think that looks pretty good. Now we need to subdivide the geometry so that when it goes into ZBrush and it's deforming the terrain based on this information, that the geo is pretty even. It's not going to have any like pinching or stretching or weirdness. So I'm just going to set these up to look like roughly even squares. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to subdivide it. You could also subdivide it in ZBrush, but I'm going to do it this way because I don't want ZBrush to smooth the silhouette edges. And I think this is ready to go. So I'm going to export it into ZBrush. Go into ZBrush. Grab our model. OK, there it is. So now we're going to go on the right hand column. We're going to go to geometry and we're going to subdivide this extra. Um, we already have it into nice squares, but we want to get a pretty high point count so that when we project the detail from the height map onto it, there's enough support and geometry to match all that information. Um, we probably want to stay below a million points. So I'm going to get this to, that seems pretty good because if we go further, it'll go to 2 million. So I'm going to stop it here. Once we've done that, we're going to go into Surface, click on Noise, and then we're going to pick our height map. Um, a quirk of this I found when I was experimenting with this is for some reason ZBrush is projecting the height map upside down. Uh, maybe there's a workaround for that. I just turn my height map upside down to match my color texture. Um, you might have to do that, uh, but hopefully it will work out just fine. So you'll see there's this grainy surface on this right now. That's because this noisemaker technique um, has a so-called basic noise. We're just going to turn it down to zero so that we don't get any of that grain. And instead, we're just going to use the noise from our alpha. So we're going to turn up the alpha strength. And you can see that it is doing what looks like deformation to the geometry um, based on the height map that we've selected. However, we want to project it on the UVs. So we'll do that. And then based on the texture, sometimes you also want this to be negative. It's just another ZBrush quirk. We're going to do it like that and then tune it to a decent strength value. Seems pretty good. We'll try that out. Then we're going to hit OK. We're going to hit Apply to Mesh. And just like that, we have deformed the geometry to match our height map. But I think this looks a little bit too weak. So we're going to undo. We're going to go back to Noise. Set this up again. Remember, turn down basic noise, turn on UV project because we spent that time getting the UV scale to be just right. You can also change the alpha scale here and it'll change the um, scale that the texture is being projected, but then it's not going to match up with the UVs when you actually put a texture onto this thing. So it's better to just leave this at one and make sure that you've done the work beforehand in Maya or 3ds Max. So now let's get the strength a little higher. Maybe this would be too high, maybe not. We will try it out. And we're going to hit Apply to Mesh. OK, great. That looks pretty good.
Now that we have this, we need to make sure that the poly count is going to be appropriate for going into a video game. Um, and this is way too high. So we're going to go into Z plugin. We're going to select Decimation Master. And what this does is it's going to triangulate the geometry um, in a way that is a lot lower poly. You can decide how low poly it is, and it usually requires a bit of experimentation based on your mesh. Um, but one important setting is that you want to turn on Keep UVs, because again, we want our UVs to match up with this height map exactly. And then you hit uh, Pre-Process Current. Make sure that it understands the geometry we're going to work with. Wait for that to finish. Cool. And now we're going to set the percent of the geometry that we want our result to have. So this, for example, if it were at 100%, it would stay at this current poly count. If it's at 20%, you know, a lot less. Um, this isn't triangle count. I think this is vertex count. So this isn't exactly the number that you'd see in Maya or Max. I'm going to go with 1%. Let's try to make it pretty low. We'll hit decimate current. And now if you look, it's reasonably low poly, but it matches up with our height map. So I'm going to call that tentatively good. So now we're going to export that back into Maya. Simple terrain wall. That seems good. Export that. Go back into Maya. Just going to rename this so it doesn't get replaced when we import the other one. Grab this. And there we go. So now when we look at this, you see that we have this cool looking 3D terrain that's based on our height map, but also the deformation of the height map exactly matches our texture. Because you can see that the areas that are more recessed are dark, and the areas that are more pronounced are lighter. So this is a pretty quick and um, relatively easy way to add detail to terrain without having to manually sculpt it.